Oh my god, kill me. Wine. From the way it tastes like musty grape juice to the culture around it, I have never understood wine. But I'm an adult now, and wine consumption kind of feels like it comes with the territory. Except, the last time I was in a wine store, I was trying to find a bottle of wine for a Harry Potter themed drink because I was attending a My Immortal reading party. And I took so long to find a bottle that security started following me around. The problem was is that I was trying to read reviews as I was walking around, and uh, they were in another language, basically. Like, like, listen to this one. On the nose, it exudes soft, subtle aromas of freshly sliced apricot, ripe raspberry, and struck steel. How am I supposed to know what that tastes like? The aromas, flavors, and texture coax you back much the same way a great fragrance draws you in again and again, like a quiet secret. Why can't you just tell me it tastes good? <laughs> It feels like they're saying nothing. Mouthfeel, body, dryness. Like, I know that dryness doesn't mean dry because it, it can't. But also, why would you use the word dry to ever describe a liquid? So what does any of this mean? How am I supposed to read a wine review? As somebody who is perpetually curious, I, I needed to know the answer. So I tried to Google it. If I thought wine reviews were bad, man. <laughs> I got overwhelmed. And that happens sometimes, but when it does, it's a really good sign that you need to ask for help. So I am asking the only person I know who actually enjoys reading about this stuff. Hello. What's up? Hello. Okay, I'm working on a video about wine. How much do you know about wine? I like it. <laughs> Are you able to read wine reviews because I just tried and it made me hurt? I don't read them, I just kind of pick and hope it tastes good. <laughs> Has that strategy worked out for you? No. Okay, so here's my proposition then. Can you figure out how to translate all of this wine language mumbo jumbo into something a normal person can understand so that you and I can both figure out how to find wine? Good plan, let's do it. <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving that to you then. Bye! Okay. Call you in five months. <laughs> Hi, again, I'm Melissa. I like food a lot. I mean, who doesn't? Oftentimes what goes along with food is wine, which I'm still trying to figure out. Finding a good wine can be a lot more difficult than it should be. And it's real confusing, okay? It's real confusing. I think that we just want to enjoy wine, but it's kind of hard to do when you don't know what to expect when opening a bottle. So, I tried to figure out how wine tastes without tasting it. Let's do this, shall we? Hi, we're back, it's been a while. I spent about 10 weeks trying to figure out all of this stuff from sweetness to acidity and tannins and balance and body and flavors and styles. I think I've got a good base or foundation for wine. Let's start off simple. There's expensive wine, there's cheap wine, and then there's good wine. Now, even wine experts disagree on what makes wine good, but I learned that it's really just personal preference. And what makes a wine good to you is how you like the balance between these three main qualities, acidity, tannins, and sweetness. Acidity gives wine a bright, tart quality that makes your mouth water and lips pucker. It's a similar sensation to eating a really sour candy or biting into a lemon slice. Now, tannins. Have you ever drank something that leaves you feeling more thirsty after you've had a sip? That's what tannins do. Now, sweetness. Sweetness in wine refers to the amount of grams of sugar per liter. You'll see a little G slash L in some descriptions. Now, all wines actually have sugar, but you just taste it more in some wines. Wines that have around 18 grams of sugar or less, that's a wine that we would call dry. Dry wines are the opposite of sweet, and in these wines you'll taste more acidity and tannins because there's less sugar to mask it. So when trying to find a wine that you like, finding your preferred balance of sweetness, acidity, and tannins is just the beginning. Next, we have the actual flavors in wine. It's where winemakers can kind of play around and make a bottle their own. So if the balance of these three things is the base, flavors are like the spices. Okay, so here are some of the primary flavors in wine. First, we have fruit flavors. Now, something to note is that wines are described by almost every fruit other than grapes. You've got tree fruits, tropical fruits, stone fruits, red fruits, and black fruits. Then there's earthiness. 
If you've ever eaten a beet or licked a clean rock, that's what I mean. It's a savory, almost mushroom-like quality in wine. And then we have spice. Think cinnamon or black pepper. It's a warm kick, not a painful one. Think of it like a hug from the inside out. Now there's obviously a lot more to describing wine. There's things like texture and depth and oakiness. Like I learned that wine can be buttery and even taste chocolatey. So the next thing that you need to know is that there's nine major styles of wine. If we tried to map out the world of wines, these would be our continents and countries. So we have reds, whites, rosés, and sparkling. And for some of those styles, we break it down further by body. Body refers to how much you feel the wine in your mouth. It's sort of like viscosity. A light-bodied wine will feel thinner, like drinking a glass of water, while a full-bodied wine will feel thicker, like melted butter. So that, all in all, our map of wine has light-bodied white, full-bodied white, aromatic white or sweet white, rosé, light-bodied red, medium-bodied red, full-bodied red, sparkling, and finally, others and dessert. So remembering what we've learned about acidity, tannins, sweetness, and flavors, we can actually find them in the different styles. Now, regardless of style, wines can vary in their level of sweetness and take on many different flavor notes. But there are some pretty distinguishing features between white and red wines. White wines lean on the acidic side and have very low tannins. The flavors you'll tend to find are brighter flavors like citrus and tropical fruits. And on the other hand, we have red wines. In red wines, tannins are much more pronounced, and the flavors you'll find are usually red or blackberry fruits, and sometimes some spice. Now, I'd love to go into more detail about rosés and sparklings and all those different kinds, but for the sake of time, we're gonna stick with red and whites. Now, I wish that we were done, and I wish that was all that you needed to know about wine, but if you've ever been to a wine store or read a wine list, they rarely tell you how many tannins are on the bottle. Sometimes they'll tell you the sugar, but I don't know. Sometimes wine bottles can just be really confusing, and you don't really know what the information is unless you know what to look for. All right, so here's how to read a wine label. They're typically labeled in one of three ways, by name, by grape variety, or by region. And if they're labeled by just some random name, then it's made up and it basically tells you nothing about what it is or what it tastes like. So you'll need to find and read a review. But if it's labeled by variety, then it's referring to the main grape that that wine is made of, like Pinot Grigio or Merlot. There are a ton of grape varieties, way too many to list, and believe me, I, I tried. I got to 130 grapes before I, you know, gave up and just realized that all the information that I needed to research was just on winefordummies.com. Yep, should have been my first choice. Should have went there first. So anyways, let's go back into the wine bottle. Let's go back to reading a label. Finally, there are other wines that are super specialized to a region, like Bordeaux or Champagne. And unsurprisingly, they're labeled by the region they're from. And region is pretty important to how a wine tastes, because the main ingredient is the grape. So where, how, and who treats that grape really affects how it tastes. Because of things like climate and processing, some regions can produce really particular qualities in wine that just can't be replicated outside that region. So from warm climates, expect wines that are more fruit forward and sweet. That's because these regions have more consistent temperatures throughout the year, so the grapes get harvested when they're at their peak ripeness. On the other hand, from cool climates, expect things that are more acidic and tart. That's because even though these regions can get as hot as the warm climates, the temperatures can fluctuate more, causing the grapes to ripen more slowly. Notably, it doesn't take living in Antarctica to make a region cool, just having a big enough temperature drop from day to night is enough. Here are some of the big wine regions around the world. There are also subregions that may have microclimates that differ from their parent regions, but we're going to keep things general. Warm climates include the places you'd expect. Southern California, Southern Italy, Argentina, and more. While cool climates include places like Northern France, Washington State, and Germany. So even if you don't know exactly where that vineyard is in the world, knowing if it's from a cool or a warm region will get you started in the right direction. And that kind of about sums it up. And am I missing stuff here? Absolutely. There's a lot of stuff that I don't, I still don't know about wine. Before quarantine happened, the plan was to have a little wine tasting segment with Sabrina. So obviously can't do that. So instead, what are we gonna do? I don't know, we're gonna do something else instead. Regardless, Sabrina, I'm gonna get you some wine. You're gonna try it and you're gonna tell me what you think. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's weird, I can't see you and I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> 
I know we had this plan before. We're gonna do this like nice little picnic. Well, I at least was gonna bring some wine over to your house. Obviously, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. I have a different plan, but I have a question for you first. So, how much do you know about wine now? <laughs> I guess I know about as much as you know, because I've been the one animating all of these things as you've learned them. Cool. Just wanted to establish that. <laughs> Yes, so I do know about tannins and sweetness and acidity and all that stuff, I think. That's a good start then. I am going to send you on a little mission to the wine store and I'm gonna send you a list of wines to buy. However, I'm not gonna tell you the name of it. I'm not gonna tell you the brand. I'm just gonna give you some clues and you gotta find it. What kind of clues? Like riddles. Okay, so it's like somehow an even worse wine review. <laughs> All of the wines are between like 10 and $20. That's what I wanna <laughs> hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm gonna read them now. Thank you for doing okay. this. <laughs> okay, have fun. Bye. Okay, I'm gonna give this a little bit more thought. <sighs> I hope I don't goof it. I hope I don't mess this up. <laughs> It has been a few days since you gave me the three riddles for wine, and I think I solved them. Did you like them? So when I first read them, I thought, this is ludicrous. I don't understand any of this. But once I like really started thinking about it, I kind of blew my, my, my own mind, because I was like, oh, I understand! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it was really weird stepping into the wine store and just being like, whoa! I know what I'm here for. I felt so empowered in the dumbest way possible. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Time to show me what you got. Wine number one is native to Portugal. This light, crisp, slightly fizzy wine stings of green apple, lime, and pear. Think green, but in a different speech. <laughs> that, that last line there, when I first read it, I was like, this is the dumbest thing in the world. I thought it was a language. To say language. <laughs> I kind of pieced it together. Like one of the top results just had the word verde, and I was like, oh, that's green in another sweet. Yay! Okay, here's what I got. Drum roll, please. I grabbed the <gasps> Avaleda Fonte Vinho Verde. I can't pronounce the words. Is it right? Did I get it right? Yeah. Because this is a very formal wine tasting, right? This is how I will be tasting the wine. <laughs> Very classy. Shall we crack this bad boy open and give it a taste? Oh, okay. Fun fact though, I bought the wrong one online. Ready for this cracking noise? Yeah. Woo! ASMR. Oh my God, that sounded so wet. <laughs> we should mention that none of this is sponsored. What, what are you supposed to do when you're tasting a wine? The bougie thing is to like swirl it around. There's not oh enough room in this cup to swirl. <laughs> You're supposed to smell it, because like swirling it apparently makes you release all the smells so you can smell everything. <laughs> I'm gonna smell it. Oh man, I hate to do this to you, but it smells like wine. Just take a tiny sip. Buttery, no. Okay, shall we go on to wine number two? This grape, though French sounding, may be grown in regions all over the world. Think of a region where we're always on opposite sides of the seasons. Pale and dry, this wine springs of bright citrusy flavors. This one I couldn't get for the life of me. All of the grapes that I've ever heard of sound French to me. <laughs> I assumed by like opposite side of the world that you meant Australia. Okay. It's, was it Australia? It's New Zealand, general area. Oh no, I got it wrong. So I guessed Australia. And then I guess a Chardonnay? I mean, I guess I can understand how that sounds French sounds. <laughs> what I'm hearing here is I'm wrong. You said that it was citrus and pale, so I kind of assumed it was a white wine. But it sounds like I got every other detail wrong. <laughs> Let me show you what I got. The wrong wine. <laughs> Actual one, I'm gonna show you. A Sauvignon Blanc. That From does sound good. Wow. Cheers. Cheers, the other one. Uh, boom. <laughs> I like this one less. 
If I had to put it, it's smoother than the other one, but it's also less good. They call me by where I'm made. You'll find me in a cool region, and I'm very well known. In this full-bodied wine, you'll find hints of currant, berries, chocolate, and a little spice. Soft and smooth, this wine will hopefully have you say ooh la la. <laughs> so here's how I guess. I was like, I only know French regions. Fortunately, she added that ooh la la bit. And I'm gonna assume that you think that French people just go ooh la la all the time. I'm gonna get roasted. I googled French wine regions, and then I just selected the filters for all of the northern part, and then opened every single wine and just read the description. I got the Jean-Pierre Moyes Bordeaux 2016. <laughs> okay, two out of three, I nailed this. I had to go to the fancy wine section. So here's the thing. This doesn't have a twist cap. You need to tell me how to do this. Walk me through okay. this. Push it and twist. Like, use, use some force. Oh my god, kill me. Ooh. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm doing it! <laughs> you go, you use force! <laughs> oh my god, I'm so weak! Yay! You did it! <laughs> Cheers! I poured quite a bit. Feels like what I imagine wine tastes like. This is like a very bougie red wine, to be honest, I think. I will I'm say this, though. Supposedly, this has like the flavors of currant and berries, which I get, but it's also supposed to be like spicy and chocolatey, and I disagree. Where's the chocolate? Thank you so much for doing all of this because I know how much work you put into figuring out all these answers. And I'm glad that the only thing I had to do was drink some wine. Do you have any last comments? Don't be bougie. Just drink the wine with your friends and have a good time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, I think I get it now. I understand why wine reviews sound the way that they do. And it's because wine isn't this monolithic, homogenous drink. There are a million and one ways a wine can vary, and when it does, it can do it by a lot. Wine can go from tasting like a Skittle to tasting like a rock. A clean rock. And after seeing and hearing and receiving texts from Melissa at like 1am as she descended into madness trying to map every single grape in the world, wine reviews started to sound less pretentious and more obsessive. And I can understand obsession. I can understand falling in love with a subject so deeply and thoroughly that you just sound like a weird alien to everyone else around you. And while I might not ever be a connoisseur or a sommelier, I am glad that those people exist. Because even though it might come off as snobby and pretentious when they talk about tannins and body, it's just because they appreciate the amount of work that goes into every bottle. It's passion, it's love, and whether you drink or not, don't you think the world could use a little bit more of that? Let us know down below. But either way, have a lovely day. Hi, I'm just doing the final edit of this video right now. Please enjoy Sabrina just being Sabrina for 10 seconds. Is this even a knife? Fernandez has started recording. Yeah. Okay, wait, I'm gonna fold in the knife again because I don't want to stab myself. Did I do it? Like that. Okay, hold up, hold Keep up. Going. Yeah, tell me about Chardonnays. What do you know about Chardonnay? Okay, we probably can't include this in the final cut. But I didn't want to pick Chardonnay because it's like the most stereotypical suburban mom wine. <laughs> I and think we should have moved that. <laughs> Any movie, the moms are drinking Chardonnay, and I'm like, no. What am I but a suburban mom? Include this in the cut. <laughs>